Hi, my name's Daniel Robinson and I'm a developer for AppConnect Enterprise. Today I'm going to show you how you can use a file exist node along with a file iterator node to detect a set of files on a given directory, in this case it will be a remote server, and how we can send the data about the files down the flow and then at some later point make a decision to process the file contents, for example by a file renode as we can see in this demo. So, a little bit about the nodes. So the file exists node can be used to process a file from a directory without needing to read the file contents. The metadata for the file is propagated down the flow without processing the contents of the file. The file contents can then be read and processed by another node, such as a file read node, later in the flow. And you can also choose whether to delete the file or leave it in the file directory after it is propagated through the flow. The file iterator node can be used along with the list mode capability of the exists node. When the file exists detects multiple files, it propagates the list of these files in the local environment. A file iterator node processes this list and for each entry propagates a local environment that is compatible with the file read node for the specific file. The file iterator node allows each file to be processed one at a time. If an exception occurs for a particular propagation, the exception is stored and the remaining file entries are processed to completion. So, before I run the flow, let's step through and see some of the key details. First of all, you should be able to see here the nodes can be found in the file drawer of the palette. The file exists node, I will show you the basic and the FTP panels, as these are the ones that contain the data that I've changed from the default values. So we've got an input directory here, which is just a path on my local file system. This is ultimately where the files will be placed locally when we do an FTP get to pull them down from the remote server. I have the list mode checkbox ticked. I am matching any pattern for the files, so it will just grab anything that it sees. And I have the delete files action set to never, which means something else within the flow will have to handle the removal of the file. Otherwise, the file exists node will error and it will block because it doesn't want to repeatedly push the same data about the same file. On the FTP panel, I've ticked the box to do the remote transfer. We've set the protocol to FTP and I've configured it with my server address port, the directory I want it to scan, and very importantly, the security identity that we will use to connect to the FTP server. The file iterator node, as you can see here, has basically no setup needed whatsoever. You can see here I've configured a compute node just after the output terminal of the iterator. And if we take a look, what I have here is just made up something just to force an error so that when I show you the flow working in a minute, I can show you what happens if you do get exceptions and how you can try to resolve them. We also have a compute node here connected to the end of files terminal. And this is just checking to see whether the overall results of processing a list was successful or not. If the overall result was not successful, then we will throw an error. Again, just to help show the different paths through the flow for this demonstration. We have a flow order here that since we're dealing with a list of files, uh, the flow order node will make sure that the ordering of the files is retained, if that matters to you. And finally, the file read, which will do the actual processing of the file contents. So on the basic panel, we have an input directory here, which is actually inherited from the LE and will become whatever was configured on the file exists node, as that is what is propagated down through the local environment. I have chosen the finish file action here to be adding a timestamp and moving to the archive. The archive is a directory underneath the input directory. And once the file has been processed by the file read node, it will move it out the way of that directory. You'll also need to configure the FTP panel on the file read node, as the file read node is the one that actually is going to do the FTP get of the files from the remote server. Because remember, the file exist doesn't do any processing, it just detects the existence of the files. So, 
you might better see here, but the, we have to set the transfer protocol. We have to set the transfer mode. And we have to set the security identity. The server port and server directory can be inherited from the local environment, but the security identity here is a key piece that you need to get on both nodes. If we hop over, hopefully you can see this. I've got on the bottom right, my local FTP server. It's just a small Python script using the third party pyftpdlib module. But in here you can see I have a user ID of Dan and password of password. Just simplicity for the demo. What we need to do is create that security identity um, for our integration server, and I'm going to use the mqsi vault and mqsi credentials commands. So we need to create a vault for a work directory. Let's create the work directory first. Here's some I had from earlier. So we we'll create the work directory, create the vault. We will create a credential type of FTP. We will call it FTP ID and I will pass in excellent. So now if we try to start a server, so now we should have a server with our security credentials stored in a vault. It would also help if I started the server. So there, we should be able to see the server has now come up. If we go back to the toolkit, and if I refresh my view, so now I can see my integration server down here and it's got nothing deployed to it. So I'm going to start the flow exerciser. This will force a deploy. As you can see, my file exist app is down here. So let's put a message. So first of all, we'll put three files, amp, bear, and capped. You can see the FTP server has just pinged. The files have gone. And if I go to my configured uh, input directory, as per my node, you can see trace files have been generated. And we can see the ant, bear and cat files that have all been moved with their timestamps to the archive. If I head back to the toolkit and take a look, we can see that indeed we had messages go through the flow. So if I expand this out, We've got three items in this local environment. So we've got the cat, which was not empty, and the bear, which was empty, and the ant that was empty. If we look at the iterator out, we can see we actually have three individual payloads now instead of the one, because the iterator has unwound that list of files. We can see we've got the information about the remote server it was on. We can see it was empty, in this case it was the ant, and we can see it's one of three files. And if I change to the others, sure enough, here is bear, and here is cat. If we move along, if we look at the end of files terminal, we can see we have information about the files, but more importantly we have file iterator results where we have a summary. This time successful is true. We have three entries and they're all successful. And we do have some information just captured about each file. This is a much more valuable and interesting on a failure situation, which we will see in a minute. Finally, we'll check coming out the file read node. And here we can see we have a set of new information, destination file, and this is about the ant. We've got information about where it came from what processed it, etc., etc. And here's the added stuff by the file read node. Typical local environment data from a file read node, everything you'd expect to see. And we have, unsurprisingly, three files. If we look at the third one, this will be for cat. And sure enough, there it is, cat. 
Um, the trace files there have exactly the same information that I just showed you via the message tree explorer. So I won't go into the, uh, the contents of those files. Next up, let's go back to my files here and let's add some more. So this time we've got five files in here and oh, something's gone wrong. You can see on my integration server, I'm getting a bunch of messages now telling me an exception has been thrown and the file exist node is now blocked from processing new files because two files on the remote server haven't been processed um, successfully. And it tells me the first file is Alveda in the my files directory. And sure enough, if we come over here and grab more, we can see on the second transaction, we've got five files coming in our list. If we check what's coming out of the file end of file, we can see in our summary that we were not successful. So we had five entries, three were successful, two failed. If we go down to the files, we can see we have the Alveda file, it has not been successful. And then further down, we have exception details with, along with inserts, etc. So hopefully that will be enough information to help you diagnose what may have gone wrong. And if we go down, I believe this one, and there we go, buggy second one. So we, we put the failing files first. And again, we've got exception details in here. We can have a look at what's coming out the out terminal. And what you can actually see here is the iterator has processed the Alveda and buggy files. And that's because it's only when it goes through this compute node that we have written some eSQL to throw the error. If we look here, we have not had all the files come out. Um, the first file we see here is the Luffy file after the cat file. So the Alveda and buggy haven't made it this far which we would expect based on the compute. Finally, if we look on the file read, we can see, yeah, we've got three more files. This should be Luffy, I believe. Yep. And if we look at the last one, it's all right. So if I head back over here and we take a look at the FTP server, Sure, we still have the Alveda and Buggy. So I am going to, I'm just going to rename these guys. I'll rename the first one. Now you can see the message coming out of the integration server has changed slightly. We now no longer talk about files blocking the server, but a single file and we list it as the Buggy file. And sure enough, the Buggy file is still there. So let's move that to there. So now I've renamed the files. The server is now no longer blocked, as we can see in the message being output. And the polling has happened, and we've picked up the files. And if we look in the archive, we can see, along with the other guys, we also have Alveda and Buggy with the OK ending that I changed them to, which got past the compute node, um, you know, forced error. And I suppose just for completeness, put it in the right directory. So I'll just stick another file in the, um, and sure enough, it's gone through. And if we go back to the toolkit one last time and we check coming out the file read, the last message here is indeed working again. So, that was all I was going to show today. Hopefully that's given you a flavor of how you can use the file exist node with list mode and the iterator to detect files exist, whether locally or remote, and make the decision to process them somewhere else further downstream, if at all. Uh, maybe you just use the existence of a file as a trigger for some other action to happen. The choice really is yours.